Money is energy and our businesses are an energy. And so there is this dance of getting comfortable with that flow, that divine flow. Welcome to your awakening journey. Today's destinations include higher consciousness and actualized potential. If all ascenders could now please be seated in a comfortable meditative posture, we are about to ascend. You are now arriving at your host, Brian Henry. Emily, thank you for joining me on Awaken Live. Thank you so much, Brian. It is such an honor to be with you today. So, you know, I had a, uh, a scripted introduction and I was going to read it and get all the bullet points, but I think you are deserving of a more authentic, organic, heart-centered one. So what I want to say about you and an introduction of you is I just love the way that you emanate the energy of someone that deeply and purely wishes to serve. I remember in the first conversation that we had, um, you, you had said something as simple as, I just love to serve. And I felt myself just be hit with this wave of energy that passed through me as I saw this reflection. And I've heard so many others say those words, but there was just something about the way that you expressed that, that I can feel the genuinity in that statement there. So I want to thank you for being someone that loves to serve and for being one that is actively doing so in so many amazing ways. That is such a beautiful introduction. Thank you. And I see that in you as well. And, you know, I think that is the synergy that, you know, allows for this co-creation today, but truly, you know, you are of such great service and this show is a reflection of that energy and so it's just an honor to be with you today mm. i appreciate again that reflection so here's where i want to take this you're someone that is passionate about your service to others and you are also someone that is passionate about business. You are, I believe you call it an intuitive business mentor. Yes. You're the owner of a conscious media company. Now, why I wanna bring this up is because I know that the vast majority, if not everyone that's tuning into this right now, have also heard the call to serve. And these are types of individuals that I think like you and I wish to prioritize living from that heart-centered place in service to our highest purpose. But I see an aspect of our experience that often gets in the way of this. Something that on one of the end of the spectrum, people are making it out to be the enemy, something that we need to ask absolutely shun and, and kind of just not think about. And on the other end of the spectrum, I think people get caught up with being too transfixed on it in ways that instill a sense of fear, scarcity, hesitation. And what I'm referring to, of course, is our relationship with the energy that is money. This is something that I've personally had an amazing learning journey around. And I know a lot of light workers end up feeling stuck in their purpose as it pertains to, you know, one manifestation of this being working jobs that they don't thoroughly enjoy because of this idea that they need to do so to make a living. 
And then on the other end of that is not feeling comfortable or okay with monetizing their gifts, feeling like, again, in service to their purpose and priority of being heart-centered, that that would be contrary to that. Another program that I've found myself trying to navigate, discover, um, and learn from. Yep. I love that you're just taking it right there, you know, because money is energy and our businesses are an energy. And so there is this dance of getting comfortable with that flow, that divine flow. And that's all it is, but it sounds so simple. And yet I believe that it can take time and it can be a dance to really get into a place of receiving. And I know for me personally, like starting a a business and then going through different iterations of that, you know, like for example, going from working with multi-billion dollar businesses and then really having this deep call within my heart to want to serve on a more personal, deeper level, you know, and work one-on-one with clients. That was a new territory for me. It's something that I had never done before, but I just knew in my soul that it's the direction that I was meant to go in. And, you know, I think when we're doing this, it can bring up, like you say, this feeling of, um, you know, maybe fear of the unknown. And that is something that I feel like, you know, we can get more and more comfortable with over time. And so like, for me, when you talk about energy of, of receiving and cultivating abundance, I never wanted to feel like, oh man, I need to, you know, get clients in order to, you know, pay my bills or, you know what I mean? And I know that, that, deep desire to want to serve, to want to build a business. And then, you know, nobody really wants to feel like, oh gosh, I need to, you know, make all this money to, right. It, it, you want it to come effortlessly. You want it to flow forward. And I think that happens more as we immerse ourselves in the energy and the joy of what we're doing. You know, Bashar says, follow your greatest joy. And I really believe that to be true. So in the beginning, you know, going back to, to my journey, it was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to try this out and I'm going to actually do it, you know, just for the love of doing it. And I'm not going to charge anything. And I know that's you know, controversial, but it was like, I really want to try this out. And I want to just be an energy of service and, you know, and, you know, doing some in-kind exchanges, right? Like just being in the state of practicing this you know, gift and being in this, you know, type of connection with others. And I found that to be really beautiful. And it was like, with that, the confidence came. And I think that's such a great lesson and reminder. It's like, sometimes we feel like, oh, if I'm not confident, then it's not for me. You know, I've heard so many times people want to start a podcast They want to write a book. They want to, you know, speak to others, but yet there is this fear. There's this anxiety. There's this feeling of like, gosh, this doesn't come naturally for me. And I want to say, you know, for me personally, it's like, I haven't felt comfortable, you know, speaking publicly, but I had such a deep desire to start a podcast You know, I just wanted to, I was curious. I wanted to hear people's stories. I wanted to connect with people in this way. And so, and then over time, it's just like something that you cultivate, but it takes that divine courage to step into the unknown. Can you relate to this at all? Courage. Mm, I love that. I, uh, I can certainly relate to the the reward in being able to jump into that with a sense of faith and being courageous in our willingness to do so. Now, I don't think everyone's ready for that, or I don't think everyone feels like they're ready for that. So what I really want to unpack is 
one, how can we cultivate that acting on that joy, on that inspiration will be enough? Because there's still this idea that I need to make a living. And if that's coming from a, a, a sense that how can I truly do so while living from a sense of passion, then I think it leads into this, this hesitation from really acting on that. I totally agree with you. And I feel like, you know, I talk about living your divine purpose. And I think sometimes we have an emphasis on the financial aspect of that, right? But your divine purpose is, to me, it's about living in alignment with your unique soul signature, you know, your blueprint. We have many different blueprints, right? But to be able to really take your own soul essence and bring it forward and use your own unique gifts and strengths. And so, you know, if you're in the energy of, you know, I love coaching, for example, I love, you know, connecting with people, um, but I'm feeling like I have to make money and it's not even really fun for me because it's about, you know, getting clients, right? Then you're moving away from that joy frequency. Mm. And really the purpose is to follow that joy, to follow that which lights you up. So even if you had, you know, a regular job or another stream of income and you're doing a podcast, for example, that can be an element of your divine purpose, your unique soul signature that you're bringing forward and you're you know, you're immersing yourself in that energy and that energy grows more and more. The more that we pour into it, it's like anything, you know, the more self-love because it really is to start a business is truly an act of great self-love and great courage. And, you know, and I feel like as we pour into ourselves, you know, it's like, a garden, you know, I often see like really the image of a garden that's blooming. And a lot of times, you know, we don't see the roots that are going down into the ground, you know, we don't see all of the movement, all of the cultivation, all of that, which is taking place, you know, because a lot of it is beneath the surface, but all of a sudden, you know, we have this flourishing you know, garden, this business, this energy that's around us. And, you know, I love the, the saying that, that most people underestimate how much they can do in a single year, but they underestimate what they can do in 10 years. And I think that's where we have to have patience with ourselves. You know, we have we live in a day and age where there is this thing that we've co-created that's called social media. And, you know, we have different examples of, you know, businesses or, you know, people who are channeling or they're living their purpose and it looks, you know, a certain way, but, you know, we don't often see all the, the cultivation, all the patience, all the pouring in, all the beautiful energy that comes into and all of the work, all of the self-love, all of the releasing that which no longer serves us. I mean, that's really, I would say 90% of the you know, work of you know, having a business is this releasing anything, you know, all of the you know, energetic work you know, we talk about building structures and systems, but really it's the energetic foundation of building a business that will be the most supportive and the most sustainable long-term. It makes me think of one of the things I've heard you say, and that our business is a reflection of our energy. Yes, 1,000%. I love that statement also that starting a business can be an act of self-love because I think that might be a little bit of a missing piece in some who are in this intention of service. So what do you have for the individual that 
wants to serve, has this idea around, you know, maybe this is a path for me going full time with the giving of my gift. But this idea of monetizing it and asking for something in return for that doesn't sit or doesn't feel entirely right. That's such a great question. You know, I feel like one of my biggest pieces of advice for having a business is to show up and to be of service and to create content and to do it on a consistent basis. And I feel as though the more that we're showing up to be of service and to build that trust with our community, and we can do this in a a variety of ways. But, you know, if you think about, you know, the way that we are as humans and we, you know, the way we gravitate naturally towards people, I believe that there is an energy and it, you know, emanates from the heart energy. It's that trust and that love. And when we show up to be of greater service in the world, it is really sending out a heart signal to other beings. Hey, look, I'm here. I'm here to serve. And, you know, and that can happen over time. We can build that relationship with our community. And I feel like, you know, a beautiful example of, of that is, is this podcast, you know, is this summit that you, you know, recently put on, you know, there's so many different ways that we can show up and be, of service and let our community know, hey, we're here. And we start to have this relationship. And I think this relates to your question of receiving because there is this natural, I believe, energy of giving and receiving. And when each of these are in harmony, everything flows. You know, and you and I were chatting about this, you know, before we, you know, went live is just how things flow when they're in balance, you know, the dreaming and then the, you know, taking aligned action of, of doing. And I feel like that is a similar, you know, an analogy as the balance of giving and receiving, because if we're truly in service we are going to get more and more comfortable with the act of receiving. And for anybody that is listening, that maybe has had difficulty with that of receiving, there are different ways um, that I feel like we can really get more and more comfortable. And one of the ways is to actually start to recognize all of the ways that we're already in, um, in receiving and really, really acknowledge it. You know, it might be a smile from somebody or a hug or, you know, when somebody gives you, um, you know, money for a service, it's like, wow, thank you. And being in full gratitude and full heart-centered appreciation. Because when we're in that energy, it becomes more and more easy to attract that. And there are, you know, in addition to that is like, okay, so how can I really call in more and more of that, which I wish to receive? Okay. You know, maybe I can really visualize what that energy will feel like. And having a goal is so important. Having something that we can physically see with our mind's eye. You know, if you're calling in a certain amount of clients or a certain amount of revenue for your business, what is that going to feel like? You know, who are those clients? Who are those dream clients that you're calling in? You know, what do they love about working with you? What does it feel like working with, with them? You know, what is the energy of you showing up to serve them? And that is um, such a beautiful thing to connect with and connect with on a regular basis, because from that, we get, we get clarity. Mm -hmm. It feels as though in order for us to first create for it in the, the physical and see the, the reflection of that, the vibration must be 
held felt experienced internally first. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And I think trust is an important ingredient as well. You know, trusting that you will be receiving. And this has been a journey and a work in progress for me, but even, you know, investing in yourself and investing in your business and, you know, um, really trusting and believing that that energy is going to flow back to you, you know, because energy wants to flow. And, and also, you know, it's true that energy, you know, money is an energy and it goes to those that focus on it, right? We want to have a healthy relationship with money, but, you know, if, if it's something that we're not, you know, in conscious of awareness of, it's likely not going to flow to towards us. And one of the points that I think is just so important to emphasize is that our willingness to receive is directly connected to associated with what we will have to give. Yes. An example yes. of this I see play out in myself is how in moments in which I've allowed myself to receive more fully, the energy that I bring into my, my service just gets amplified tenfold in contrast to a pattern that I used to play out, which was give, 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 give. I'm pouring, I'm pouring, I'm pouring. I have nothing left to pour. Feeling depleted, feeling like there's nothing left there for me. Judging this aspect of my psyche and being that that desires to receive in return and not attributing greater importance to, to either end of the equation because they are truly two sides of the same coin. And in full balance, I think harmony is one of the words you said, um, that exchange happens in a way that they, they, they go hand in hand. My, my receiving supports my giving and my giving supports my receiving. I love that you bring that up, you know, because I feel like we're similar in this, in this way is like, I'm not, um, driven by material things, you know? Um, so for me in my journey, it's like not been focusing on money and realizing that it is actually, um, in my highest good to have a better, healthier relationship with this form of energy um, that we're, you know, in agreement with at this point in time is like, okay, you know, what, what would it look like to have additional resources? You know, what good can I do with those resources? And I think that is important for people to connect with if they're, you know, coming from a place of like, oh, you know, I don't, I don't need money or I don't, you know, connect with necessarily these material aspects. It's like, okay, but what are the things that may be, you know, joyful for you to experience with this kind of energy? Now, what to the individual that has desires in the physical plane, but shuns themselves for that? I think it's all coming into ownership of our our unique path and our you know unique way of expressing and that is you know the journey i think that is reflected a lot of times in our businesses but it is you know owning who you are and why you're here and we came here to this physical plane to experience a lot of different things and one of them is you know is um all the resources and the beauty and the abundance that's here on this this planet i love that because well just to give a little bit of context to where this 
this question stems from, if it hasn't been clear already, there's a, a personal interest in just hearing you share on all of these topics because they are all very relevant to, to me and my family. And I've seen how, you know, there's this extremist view in spiritual communities that often, I think I kind of alluded to it already, that puts money at the, the root of all evil. And I do truly believe that there's this integration taking place in our world and in many of our unique individuated expressions. I can't speak for everyone, but what I certainly can say is I feel a sense of confidence in sharing that there are many that are being called to, to integrate this, this aspect of themselves, these desires with this, this pure intention of, of service to others. Yes. Actually, I'm going to invite us to, to just take a moment to, to be, to sit back in that, to enjoy that, allow for whatever wants to arise in this space to do so. Thank you for being here, Emily. Such a pleasure. What's on your heart? You know, I feel as actually, um, I love that you brought that up because I wanna bring it back to the heart. You know, we, we are talking about, you know, abundance and we're talking about important topics. And I feel like it all comes back to our heart energy and to be in, you know, the greatest expression of love. And, you know, and I, I hope it's okay to bring up the example of Together We Ascend Summit. Um, Cause I feel like your list, many of your listeners you know, attended or have heard about it. It was an amazing experience and such a, a beautiful vision. And I think that, you know, there was the idea of connecting and bringing people together. And, you know, just the behind the scenes of it, I'd love to share is that like, you know, you set up several opportunities for the speakers just to connect and just to get to know one another. And I thought that was so profound. And it's, you know, not nothing that I had really ever experienced before. And you did that, I believe, just for the sheer love of bringing people together. And the love that you poured into that summit was magnified and it was such a gift to the world. And so I just wanna acknowledge you for that. And I feel like that is such a beautiful example when it comes to you know, how we can follow our joy and also how that creates abundance for ourselves and also in the world. You know, If you had done it from a place of strategy and money, it just, it wouldn't feel aligned. It wouldn't feel, you know, expansive and full of joy and heart-centered connection. And so I feel like, you know, bringing it back to the heart is like, sometimes I feel like it's the stuff that doesn't make, you know, logical linear sense. At least that's been the experience, you know, in, in my business. I started a podcast maybe four years ago and, you know, I, it didn't really make any, any sense because at the time I was working in corporate America and I had a very different, you know, energy and, you know, style. I was kind of that go, go, go. And, you know, really focused on 60 hour plus work weeks and, and things like this. 
And, you know, and I, but I got this download to start a podcast and connect with, you know, renowned spiritual teachers and, you know, to just, that was this curiosity that, that drove me. And, you know, when I shared a couple in it also at the time, you know, was deathly afraid of, of public speaking. So, you know, I had that, <laughs> that made it, you know, even more challenging. Right. And, you know, people that I told at the time were like, oh, so you're going to, you know, start a, a podcast about business or marketing. And I was like, no, <laughs> no. Um, you know, and I just wasn't sure where it would lead, but I just listened to that inner voice that inner call. And I feel like those are the moments, you know, that I can honestly say I'm most proud of in my life is the things that don't necessarily make logical linear sense. It's when we follow our heart, where we connect with our soul. And a lot of the times that is starting a business, you know, it, it, it is following that dream or that vision or that download that you receive. And you say, I'm going to take one step forward and I'm going to act on this because it is on my heart. And, you know, and this vision was given to me for a reason. And I, I'm going to take one step forward, not knowing how everything is going to unfold, not knowing the full picture yet, because we never get it. We never get a full map. We just get the thing that's right in front of us. And we act on that and we follow the, the breadcrumbs and we listen and we trust and the more of it appears. And it is like a muscle because the more that we, you know, the more that we listen and respond to that voice, the more we trust ourselves, the more that we love ourselves. Um, and, you know, that more that that path grows. And one thing that I absolutely love, you had uh, Lori Ladd on your show, and it was such a great interview. And, and she said, you know, what would you do if you, you know, tried, you tried channeling for 30 days and you weren't able to channel, like nothing was, you know, coming through, would you give up or would you keep going? She just said, for me, it wasn't that easy. Like, you know, and this is Lori Ladd, who's, you know, one of the most recognized channels out there now, you know, and to hear her say that was like, yes, I love you. Thank you. You know, and because guess what? It's not always super easy. And sometimes it is for people. And that's wonderful. That hasn't been my path or my experience. And I love people sharing that because for a lot of, for a lot of us, it takes practice and it takes, you know, working through and releasing any limitations and, you know, getting into our own flow and really understanding our own unique energy and being able to bring that forward. And that is when all the magic starts to unfold. A willingness to take that next step forward, even when the entire path isn't clear before you, even though, even when you may not know where it leads, but acting on that inspiration with full trust that the next step will reveal itself and that path before you will end up being a beautiful one. Yes. Yeah, it is. It's trust and it's, you know, surrendering. Not always easy to do, but I think many are pointing to the type of magic that unfolds when we're willing to. Yeah, you know, uh, Bronnie Ware, I'm not sure if you're familiar with her book, but she um, wrote a book which shared, you know, the five biggest regrets of, of the dying. And one of the most sort of common threads was this, I wish I had the courage to live a life that was more authentic to me. And I always remind myself of that because, you know, and I think that, you know, this is part of you know, building the new earth is that we all 
show up with our own unique gifts and our own unique soul signature. And we are an authentic embodiment, right, of, of ourselves, you know, and, but, you know, we have, we are in a, a transitional phase and, you know, sometimes it doesn't always feel easy to do. And I really, truly believe that when we are in our authentic heart space and, you know, living, you know, with just trusting that which is flowing through us, that is an act of tremendous courage and bravery. And it's what our soul deeply, deeply desires. You know, our souls come in and incarnate here to evolve. And we want to grow and to learn. And so, you know, I love that, you know, aspect of the entrepreneurial journey because it's not always easy. There are moments that test you in a variety of ways. Um, you know, we talked about abundance and money, um, but there's, you know, burnout and, you know, learning how to balance your energy and, you know, take care of your body and manage all of these other aspects of, you know, running a team and, you know, asking for help and, you know, businesses are so much about relationships. So we have this enormous sort of playground to be able to experience that which we came in here to do, which is to learn and to grow and to share and to teach that we, which we know. And so that's, I think, one of the most beautiful aspects of having a, a business is that we're able to, to learn so, so much about ourselves. One of the, uh, the statements that has just echo been echoing in my mind for the last five years since first starting my own business is business becomes the greatest vehicle for growth. And the way that I've been watching this unfold is the way how having this, this vision for, for self and for my business how first connecting to that, like you've mentioned in the mind's eye, what does it feel like within myself? And then embodying that requires this, this showing up to, to grow, to expand, to be able to, to, again, embody that fully. I guess what wants to come through here is when that inspiration comes through and that when you, you've been inspired with that, that vision, there may be this, there will have to be this difference in where you are and where that, what that looks like. But it's in that courageous act of choosing to embody that now do we invoke our expansion. Yes. I love that so, so much. And it's, it's so true. There is a, a gap and that's, you know, if there wasn't, then we wouldn't be growing. We wouldn't be, you know, um, evolving so that there needs to be that. And sometimes the, the gap's not big enough. Like sometimes we actually can sell ourselves short, right? Like, and so it's like, let's dream even bigger. Let's be even bolder. Let's be even more courageous. Like what is truly possible? Like what are the divine, you know, partnerships and co-creations and collaborations and you know all of this that we can call into into creation um and i think that creator energy is so so fun you know that sacral chakra energy to like play with and really um you know create i love creating all different kinds of things and actually that's such a beautiful way of infusing creative energy into your business is to connect with that anything that inspires creativity so if you love to paint if you love to you know exercise be in in nature if you love to travel or take photographs you know anything you know if you like to do vision boards anything that connects you with your creative energy you'll be able to harness that creative energy in in your business and i think create creativity is truly one of the most valuable resources 
not only in business, but just in our world in general. I mean, we have enough creativity in this world to solve all of our problems. Think about that. It's inspiring, you know, and, and, you know, I, I, I feel like as we tap into that creativity more and more, we will just see our world transform before our eyes. What's your process for tapping into that? I love waking up in the morning early when it's still, you know, if it's dark, I like that time of the day. It's just so peaceful. Um, I like to go outside actually during that time. So, and I live near the water. Um, so I'll either, you know, walk or, or go for a run on the water. And I like to meditate in the morning and do automatic writing. And that really gets me in sort of the flow and also kind of calling in like what is in my highest greatest good to create and focus my energy on for the day. And that's kind of how I start the day every day. Um, and from that, you know, I kind of are, I'm able to attune to um, that, which is, you know, calling me or um, what is wanting my energy to be focused on for that day. And, you know, much of what I shared, like, I love creative projects. I love dance. Um, and my dog actually brings me a lot of joy and creative energy. I love playing with him and taking him for walks. So if I'm like sitting at my computer for too long, or, you know, just kind of need to like, you know, because that's tr like, you know, we just have to remember that we are um, physical, energetic, spiritual beings, multidimensional beings. And so sometimes, like, if, you know, for me, it's like sitting on the computer too long. Okay, you need to move your energy, you need to dance, you need to shake, you need to, you know, get some exercise or go out in nature. You know, what I put in, in my body, um, you know, all of that really, truly matters. What about for you? In so many ways, we are so similar. Um, movement, movement is so key for me. Um, that's why it can be a little bit of a, a tug of war sitting at the computer too long, where a lot of the work gets done. So definitely recognizing when it's time to to take that step back and get the body moving, get the energy going, like. I'm just even talking about this and I can I can feel like how that supports me in bringing forth more creative energy in what I do. Um, the breath, movement, recognizing the, the connection between that and the creative energy that we, we express has been just such a game changer. Yeah, yeah. I know I, movement for sure. Kundalini actually yoga is really helpful for me. And like, as you're sharing, it's just, I'm kind of thinking of like the central column in our, you know, spinal column is like just being able to move that is, um, is so helpful. Like the cat cow I like to do, um, to just move the energy. And that's, um, that's just one of the ways, but also just moving our physical environment, you know, for working in a certain place for a long period, just moving, you know, sw switching it up, um, you know, um, lighting some candles or bringing in some flowers, you know, bringing that, that energy of beauty. There's so many different ways. What comes up for me is the, the importance of filling back up our cup. If you can think of the, the work that we're doing, the, the outputting of as this expression of our creative energy. Well, it's actually when we're not working from my experience that we're refilling. Yeah. And often when we get like the biggest downloads or, you know, that um, comes through, it's like when you're in that relaxed sort of flow state, but you're absolutely right. Like we need to refill our cups. And that was like one of the hardest things for me to learn. Um, I think, you know, starting a business for me, it's like recognizing that it is more of a marathon rather than a sprint. Um, and I 
came in really from that corporate America energy. So that was still my energy. I really needed to shift that. I really needed to transform that. And meditation was hugely helpful for me for that breath work was really helpful. And also, and this sounds really simple, but for me, it was the hardest thing was like to actually schedule pockets of time that was, was downtime. Like that I didn't have meetings or didn't have like things on my to do, like such a hard thing for me to do. And now after, you know, a long sort of journey of learning how to do that, I appreciate so much spaciousness because we are cyclical beings. We have to understand the rhythms of our own body. You know, nature goes through the seasons and we're a part of nature. And sometimes we don't honor our own cycles and seasons of like, oh, today is like a day that I am really internal and I need to rest. And I, you know, I don't need a million meetings or I don't need to be talking to everyone. Like I really need to go within and be giving ourselves the grace to be able to do that is a, a beautiful gift. And that again, directly supports the other side of that equation, which is the, the creative output. And what I mean by that is I find that the enjoyment and the energy that I put out there becomes so much more powerful when I'm allowing myself that, that space to rest, when I'm allowing myself to, to be in harmony with those, those seasons, the other season. Um, so, you know, that, one, that question, that question uh, actually came up for me when, when I was just kind of reflecting on where, where I felt like this may go. And it's, what about when we're not feeling motivated or in that mood wanting to do? How do we approach yeah. I love that because I feel like sometimes, and this has been my experience, is that chaos precedes transformation. And sometimes there's going to be uncomfortable moments in your business where maybe you feel like things are out of alignment or they're shifting or you're just not feeling like super motivated or inspired. And for me and my experience and experience working with clients, it's like, oftentimes there's really amazing changes that are taking place. Um, but, you know, our human minds are kind of like, what is happening, you know, being sort of impatient with a process of like, oh, but I, you know, I've got to continue on. I've got to, you know, focus on this, the task kind of in, in front of me, but I say honor what's happening and really tune in because sometimes we're we, we, we there can be a, a programming to continue to you know push through or you know be motivated and do all the things and it's like okay well maybe this is showing up for a reason of you know showing you where something is perhaps out of alignment or you can come into greater alignment for me, for example, and I shared this in the very beginning, but I went through a really large, you know, pivot in my business. And before that, um, I wasn't feeling like super excited about the work that I was doing, you know, and I was just like, ah, oh, I felt really burnt out. It wasn't fun anymore. That's a signal, you know, that's a signal that like, whatever you, you're, you know, you're doing, there's, it's not bringing you as much joy and we are really truly meant to follow our joy and so to really tune in and I had to go within and really you know attune to what it was that my soul was desiring and sometimes it's such a subtle change sometimes it's like well I'm you know want to get exercise and I'm my body's not moving enough or you know you're I'm, I'm not feeding the the right you know nutrition um, so it could be something really simple that makes a world of difference. Um, or it might just be like, hey, even though it doesn't make, you know, a lot of sense 
to the thinking mind, which right is we know is limited is like, yeah, well, maybe I just need a little bit extra rest, you know, for whatever reason, like I just need to take a couple of days and read and relax or go to the beach or something like this. Um, but really allowing yourself to go into the discomfort and explore it and give ourselves the space and the permission to see what's there. And through that, I think that we're able to navigate or find, and like I said, you know, chaos precedes transformation. So a lot of times it's like, oh, if things feel really maybe rocky or uncomfortable and something there is about to happen or to catalyze or to change if we tune into that and we follow that. I love that. And I am certainly going to be remembering that statement next time I'm in the midst of chaos. Yeah. And the other thing too is, you know, following our fear and our discomfort, because I feel like there's always so much there for us, Mm -hmm. you know, um, then I'll give an, an example of this, you know, I have a client that has had such a successful career and she's, you know, in her mid sixties and she's, you know, looking to get into, you know, a completely different way of, of work, of expressing her divine purpose, right? It, you know, it always is changing and evolving with us. Um, and she is doing, you know, more healing work one-on-one with clients. And I mean, she really came in to be this medicine woman healer. Um, but there's a part of her that's like, oh gosh, you know, there's so many people already doing it. And, I'm, you know, this age thing, right? And, and this discomfort around that, And I'm like, well, follow, you know, follow that because we are fed so much misprogramming around age, right? That needs to be disrupted. That needs to be, you know, we need to really recognize the truth about aging and the divine wisdom and the seasons of life and honoring. And and she is meant to be a way sharer of that you know, and, you know, and so it's, it's really in that, you know, fear or that discomfort that oftentimes there's something that's really, really potent and powerful because she's just this magical, you know, expression of authenticity and, you know, light. And, and so um, I'm just really excited for her and all that she's bringing forward. And I think it's a great reminder to all of us that, you know, there are those things that maybe are, you know, a uh, in the back of our mind and we're like, oh, but I can't do this. Or, you know, this person's already doing this. Like, no, we need all of our own unique way of doing things and sharing our own unique light in the world. The moment that sense of fear comes up, I think that should be a a light bulb, a trigger to, to, like you said, show up in exploring that because the message that I'm receiving here is that there's always a gift in that shadow and these emotions, these feelings always come with them, a indicator to, to something better if we're willing to, to explore them and better understand why they're showing up for us. Yes. And yeah. I also think that on some level, that's going to be inevitable in our our intention of constant evolution because it's that discomfort. Um, I don't wish to say that the that there has to be this ease and and struggle through this, but there's a way that we can approach these these energies from this lens of there's something here that is supporting me in my evolution and the reason why I'm feeling in the first place is because I'm evolving into something new. And then it becomes something that we we begin to embrace even. Yeah, love that so much. And it is kind of reprogramming, like, you know, um, 
is almost like, like you said, you know, if, if there's a fear that is arising, it's like recognizing all the beauty that is, you know, actually unfolding. And it's the same thing with nervousness and excitement. You know, I, I, I hear that they're located in the sort of the same center of the brain. And that's something that has helpful for me is like reframing, like, oh no, I'm not nervous. I'm, I'm actually excited, you know? And when, because sometimes there is, um, you know, a similarity in that energy and it's just a matter of really, you know, reframing it to ourselves in a way that is empowering and that feels exciting. Mm -hmm. Emily, I want to begin to, to wrap this all up very neatly and on an amazing note. So before I ask the question that I know you know what's coming, I, um, I wanna give you the opportunity to just share if there's anything that you got going on that you'd like to invite others into. And if anyone was interested in exploring more of what you have to offer and perhaps the, the option of working with you, where would they do so? Oh, well, thank you. Yes, I am really excited. Um, you know, I have soul purpose planning sessions that I'm offering for 2022. And it's really a, an amazing co-creation experience of being able to do the big picture dreaming and then ground it down into aligned practical, you know, next step action. And so that is um, on my website, which is uh, I am Emily Harris.com. And then I also have uh, a podcast um, where people could connect to me and, and find, um, which is the soul collective. Awesome. And of course, links to all of that will be in the show notes of this episode. And if you're seeing this on Facebook, I think some of those links are already actually up there. Okay. Beautiful. So you know what's coming because I just found out that you've listened to a few episodes. So I think you know what the grand finale question is, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Emily, you just realized the power telepathically communicate to all of humanity. You're listening right now. What do you have to say? You're so loved beyond what you could possibly imagine. You are a unique expression of the divine and your light is so needed in the world and thank you for being you. This is where I thank you. Beautiful being in service, leading the way, being a leader by example of what pure, genuine, inspired action towards serving the highest light, expressing that love for all of those leaders to feel, and doing so using this amazing opportunity and tool that is available to us, that is business. It's both a vehicle for growth and expansion but of course, again, to serve others in the amazing ways that you do. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Brian. This was so much fun and such a joy and honor. 